The EOS M5 is the enthusiast mirrorless camera, packed full of technology to help you capture that perfect shot. In an earlier video, I shared with you some of the basic features of the camera, and in this video, I'm gonna talk you through some of the more advanced features to help you do more with your camera. So let's get started. So what is AV mode? AV mode controls our aperture, which in effect controls our depth of field. So in this setup, I'm selecting a small aperture number. I've chosen F5. It's gonna give me a shallow depth of field. So my foreground is nice and sharp and the background is blurry. This would be perfect for portraits. Now, if I want everything in the scene nice and sharp, I need to select a higher F number. So I'm gonna go for F22, which is going to close down the aperture and give me nice sharp depth of field from the foreground right through to the background. This would be ideal for landscapes. Okay, now we know what AV mode is, let's jump into TV mode. TV mode controls our shutter speed, so we can choose a slow shutter speed, which will allow more movement in the shot, or we can select a fast shutter speed to really freeze that action. The first demonstration I'm gonna do is with a slow shutter speed. So I've set my camera on to TV mode, and I'm gonna change it down to one tenth of a second. When we introduce a little bit of movement, at that slower shutter speed of one tenth of a second, you'll notice that the camera captures that motion. Now, if I wanna do the opposite of it and freeze that motion, I'm gonna to need to select a much faster shutter speed. So now I'm gonna move the camera for one tenth of a second up to one eight hundredth of a second. As you can see, even though the subject is moving, with the faster shutter speed, I'm able to really freeze that action and get a nice, clean, sharp shot. So what is time-lapse movie mode? Okay, the first step is to make sure that this top dial here is turned around to the movie mode. From here, you need to select the time-lapse movie mode by pressing this button here on the top left-hand side. Your options are to scroll between auto exposure for movie, manual exposure, and time-lapse. Once the time-lapse movie mode is selected, jump into the custom menu, which is on the right-hand side here. And this is where we can select the number of shots, the intervals, and whether your exposure is fixed per frame or adjusted for each shot. One thing that I really love about this menu here, once you've selected your intervals and your shots, it will tell us the time required to capture that time-lapse movie, and the end playback time would result in a 12-second movie. On the back of the camera here, you can see all of the commonly used menu setups for the camera. I'm gonna jump into the AF mode and explain these a little further. In this camera, we have the AF tracking. This is perfect for when you have people in the shot. So if you wanna track on moving faces, this is the best mode to select. The next one is the smooth zone AF. This will focus within a designated zone. And finally, you have one point AF. This is the perfect mode for when you want to be very precise about your autofocus. Right next to those AF modes, we have one shot or servo. So what do these AF operations mean? One shot is perfect for when you want to focus on a still subject. However, if your subject is moving, you might want to switch over to AI servo, which is really helpful for capturing fast moving subjects. If you'd like to try a different look and feel for your images, why not try out some of the built-in Creative Assist filters in your camera? Make sure you turn the mode around to this dial here and select between one of the built-in features. I quite like the HDR, toy camera, or the miniature effect. Now, don't worry if you've forgotten to do this before you've taken the photo. These filters can also be applied to the images in the playback mode. Another really great way to change the look and feel of your shots is to use the camera's built-in picture styles. Now, I like using this menu to jump in really quickly to change my photos to black and white in camera. If you want your black and white images to appear a little punchier out of camera, why not customise your picture styles within the Info Detail Set button? When you have the picture styles activated on the back of the screen, just press this info button here and you can jump in and customise the sharpness, contrast, filter effects as well, all within this menu here. 
If you'd like to customise some of the buttons and dials that I've shown you here today, you can do so. You can do quite a lot within the custom controls. Simply press this button on the back of the screen and you'll be able to see which buttons you can assign for a new feature. For example, AF touch and drag button at the front of the camera. I can reassign that to be a variety of different features. Could be manual focus, burst mode, picture styles, white balance, you have quite a few options that you can reassign these buttons to. Okay, if you've got a little excited and changed the buttons on the camera and you think you've gone past a point of no return, don't worry, we can reset the camera back to the default settings. To do so, simply jump into the yellow menu and go down to reset camera. Once you've done a basic reset, the camera will be back to its default settings. I hope this video has helped you get to know your EOS M5 a little bit better. So get out there and take some shots.